At the end of the last video where I introduced the hippo tang, I was a little nervous because he got a couple of white specks that looks like ick. We have an interview here. So right now my tank looks like this. I was like, what happened? Like everything looks okay. And then I remember, you know, yesterday, a certain somebody was using a certain something right around the tank until I was like, no, stop! It's not around your tank. It's like, it's on the couch. you're like right it's here. Like the couch is right here next to the tank. It's like, it's not right. okay, let me next show Next thing I know, I'm like, me... why don't you clean your basement then? Huh? You're like, <laughs> yeah, that's like, far that from the stuff? fish tank. No! This is far. Today, we see cloudy tank. <laughs> that's the consequence that you didn't actually clean up your old basement. You're trying to turn it around on me. <laughs> Cause I clean. If we have a tank crash, let this, let the record show. Yay, you made a tank crash. That's, That's her. her destiny. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the snail trying to get out of here. Changed yesterday. Oh, that may be the reason. I did not change any water <laughs> yesterday. Stop trying to wiggle out of this. You're not wiggling out of this one. Moments later. All right, guys, regardless of the cost of the cloudy water, what I know is that ideally I'll be able to do a water change right away. And that's why I've moved the good old brute trash can from outside underneath the deck back inside. Don't worry, on the outside, it has a lid. Nothing has been in there since I've washed it and placed it outside. Two thousand years later. After many, many hours, the um, brute trash can 40 gallon ones is finally fill to where I think is good. It's probably 35 gallon, I think. So that's about one quarter of the tank volume. There's 135 and plus, I don't, I don't know, maybe like 20 gallon or something. Really popular question is what salt mix do I use? Or if I recommend um, specific brands. Um, I've used a lot. I started out at Instant Ocean, switch over to Reef Crystal. I tried out Red Sea Coal Pro, and then I tried out Fritz. I switched to Red Sea Blue Buckets. And then I, I did um, Tropic Marins, uh, the regular ones. And now I'm using Tropic Marin uh, Bioactive. As you can see, I have uh, <laughs> I have no real loyalty in terms of salt brand. Honestly, I'm like a regular hobbyist. Like, whatever the salt is hot and seems to get good review at the moment, I try it. And up to this point, I honestly have not really noticed a big difference between different salt brands uh, besides the parameters. Certain salts mix at the parameters at once. At the moment, I'm shooting for like alkalinity of eight. So the Trumpet Marin uh, Bioactive seems to fit the bill. However, the issue is that it does have like carbon dosing elements in there. And I'm not sure if that's actually good for a tank that is <laughs> trying to cycle right now. So I'm questioning the salt choice as well. Hindsight, um, I probably should have gone for the Trumpet Marin Pro or maybe even the uh, Red Sea Blue Bucket because I feel like the parameter is a little bit closer to uh, what I'm shooting for. So we'll see. I think like after I'm done with this bucket, I may go back to the um, Red Sea Blue Bucket simply because it seems to be a, one of the clean salts that I've used for a long stretch with no issue at all. I classify myself as like a intermediate hobbyist. But for my needs in a reef tank, um, salt for the most part just been salt. Uh, but of course, I can't really detect the trace elements and whatnot, so I'm sure those make a difference as well. Obviously, certain salts, they pay more attention to trace elements. Like, for example, I know the Tropic Marins one, they, um, they did a fantastic job of including the major elements as well as the trace elements, which is something that maybe some of the uh, other brands of salt may not pay that much attention to. So that's something for you guys to look into. Uh, but for my needs, because I'm not keeping super sensitive corals and I'm doing um, dosing as well, for the most part, most salts seems to work for me. And for now, it happens to be Tropic Marins Bioactive. But we'll see. I think later on, especially when I move towards more sensitive corals like the SPS, I may have a stronger opinion when it comes to salts. All right, to bring it all up to speed, I got one of those like Phoenix titanium heater that I've been using, uh, thanks to my Reef Sensei for recommending it. I like the idea of titanium because like with glass, I, I'm always afraid that if I accidentally bump into them, they may crack or they may break a little bit easier. To better mix the salts, instead of me stirring it, I'm gonna just drop a power head in there. Good old Maxi Jet 1200. I actually have the VCA vacuum attachment that I haven't really been using because I've been using the um, Home Depot shop vacs uh, bucket head. Down the road, I may use it a little bit more, possibly um, doing something like using a tube, attach it to the power head, and then kind of drain things into a, uh, a filter socks and just dump the water back in. So I don't have to do a water change every single time I uh, vacuum the, uh, the sump. 
three hours later. So it's been a couple hours, things looks good. And because I'm using the Tropic Marin Bioactive Salts, I'm a little bit more careful in terms of mixing them. It has a certain polymer that feeds a bacteria that kind of confuses the conductive testing, but it looks like it has been long enough that it is pretty accurate. So 35, pp, uh, 35 ppm in terms of salinity, so we're good to go. Um, so water is also warm. Everything is good. And the water is gonna be a little bit cloudy because of the bioactive property, the polymers in the water as well. And it's not gonna clear up until the bacteria actually uh, consume this. And that's also why I'm kind of like, I don't know if I should use the bioactive salt here, especially I'm experiencing a bacteria bloom, meaning that there's enough, more than enough food for the bacteria to kind of feed on. But that's the salt I got right now, and I know it's good salts. I'm gonna drain the tank water out actually into the gravel road because I don't want any grass growing there. Salt water is perfect for that. And then we're gonna pump in the new salts. Let's get started. Okay, here's mom. Finally seeing mom for the first time. I've been taking care of the kids and the tank and work. Oh it's my god. <laughs> All right, so I've done the water change and uh, I seriously misjudged it. I think we ended up doing maybe half, well, maybe like two thirds of this uh, trash can. So I'm guessing it's about, what, like 20, 20 gallon, 25 gallon water change versus like the 45 or 40 that I was wishing for, but that's okay. First round, it was uh, surprisingly not as painful as I thought it would be. I thought I would hate, I would hate it. Yeah but it was actually not bad. It was not bad. So things are on a larger scale, but at the same time, I no longer need to haul buckets because I'm now smart enough to use a pump. Now I know why all of you guys is like, oh yeah, just hook it up to a pump. Dude, it's so much easier. I'm surprised the MaxiJet 1200 is not a little bit faster. So I may try to pick up like an older pump or something that will just move the water. First time doing water change, fantastic. Went beautifully, all the things seems happy. Scene is already pulsing and I can kind of see inside the tank now, which is good. And I, I was able to like suck up some of the loose detritus in the sump as well. So fantastic, fantastic. All right, let me go ahead and pump out the rest of the salt water. I've, I thought about doing another water change here, but I think, I think it's good, man. Let's just wrap this. And I think like this last bit is worth mentioning because check this out. This is at the bottom of the barrel. There's pretty much no residue at all from the salt and this is pretty impressive. Look at this, there's nothing in here. And again, you may be like, oh, you pumped it out. No, the because the power head was suspended kind of like this high. Because I, I was afraid that there may be residue at the bottom of the, uh, of the bucket. I did not want to suck them and push them in the tank. So they were kind of always suspended. But look at look how clean the salt makes. I guess that's one of the difference you can, you can say. With different salt mix, certain salt makes a little bit cleaner. Three days later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? It has been a few days since the Lysol spraying incident. I'm happy to report that for the most part, the tank has been cleared up. Now, why don't we do a quick tank update while we at it? So at this point, this 135 gallon mold aquarium has been up for roughly three, three and a half months now, if my memory is correct. And things are slowly getting back on track. Besides the fact the fish is doing well, the corals are doing well, what I'm really, really happy about is actually seeing algae uh, on the rock. This includes the brown diatom as well as some green algae. If you follow my channel, you know one of the things I do is actually looking at the type of algae that's showing up in the tank to see if the tank is uh, ready to move on and introduce more corals. My personal indicator is green algae. I know that brown algae is coming and then once I start seeing green algae like this, then I feel like the tank is mature enough to start taking on uh, corals. And to reinforce that idea, you see that Caroline algae is actually growing in the back. All right, if you check out those little spots right there, those are actually coralline algae. You see some of these are actually pink. And this is um, another indicator that, hey, the tank is uh, mature enough to start taking on some corals. And of course, for this tank, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit because I was taking down the $45 tank, so I need some place to put the corals. And thankfully, all the corals made it okay, probably thanks to all the biomedia I moved in from the $45 tank as well. Let me give you a quick update on the livestock and how the equipments are doing and then what's next. Framer, silver belly rest is still only appearing uh, in the morning and around afternoon and night he just goes to bed. Really weird. The shrimp's doing well, all the snails and all the hermits doing well. Surprisingly I did not lose one single snail up to this point. Sexy shrimps all four are still accounted for. I see two right now but yesterday I counted all four so I assume they're all okay. Corals for the most part are doing well but for the most part I have pretty easy to keep corals in this tank so <laughs> I'm not gonna brag about it. So was, especially the ones near the front of the tank are kind of reaching up for light. Uh, I do still have the XL30 Gen 4 Pro running. However, 
new lights are coming. I know I've been saying it, but new lights are actually coming possibly middle of next week. Once the light gets here, I should be able to install them pretty quickly, probably within a day, and then the tank should be in its final form. Speaking of corals, as you guys know, I installed the Alcatronic last week uh, to start dosing the ATI Essential Pro. The ATI Essential Pro is two parts dosing. However, it does contain alkalinity, calcium, and also trace elements. So it's not just alkalinity and calcium. And as a result, the Xenias are really happy. Look at this, especially the ones at the back. In this tank, before I started dosing last week, they did not pulse at all, but it is finding whatever nutrient it wants in the water. So it started pulsing like this ever since I started dosing last week, which is fantastic, fantastic to see. Xenia is actually one of my favorite soft corals. I know um, they have a pretty bad rap with a lot of people because of the way they grow out of control. But to me, those seems to be first world problem because I have always wanted Xenia, especially a nice tank full of pulsing Xenia that actually pulses. Uh, for the longest time, I struggled to get them to pulse, but the secret seems to be certain elements in the water that has been missing in my 45 gallon tank. Number one, it needs certain elements in the in the water that was missing. And number two, low flow area, just like that back corner right there. Versus here, they have slightly higher flow and already you can see that the pulsing is not as intense or not as obvious over there. Another thing that really surprised me is actually the baby hippo tank right here. Uh, I did a video on him a couple weeks back and it was like half the size. It grew tremendously in the span of one month. When it first arrived, it was maybe like half the size of the male clowns. Look at him now, he is almost catching up in size with the um, male clown. And just like before, it's like a Velcro fish, man. Just kind of stick onto the pair of clowns nonstop. Wherever they go, he goes as well. At the end of the last video where I introduced the hippo tank, I was a little nervous because he got a couple of white specks that looks like ick. But thankfully, it never returns. So uh, knock on wood real quick. Um, otherwise, it seems super healthy. The other thing I'm trying to do right now is that I just bought the two little fishies uh, feeding pouch. That's kind of like LG clip, except it's a little pouch. So I've been trying to feed them uh, Nori's, that's a green seaweed, as well as the red one. But so far, no luck. I mean, all the fish seems to ignore the seaweed. Another really cool critter I got is actually this little oyster are right here and this came from my good friend Joseph. Recently he went to one of his friends who was uh, living off the uh, eastern shore and he brought a bunch back to eat and to share friends. Added two of these guys into this tank just to see how they do and one perished within the day, the other one survived. They've been living in here for about I think three weeks at this point which is really cool because I know they do uh, filter the water so Hey. Now onto the not so cool part. The not so cool part is that, yes, I am seeing Aptasia now. I got one, two, I remember right there, three. And right there among the zoas is four. And I know I got two and some like around the biomedia. So now I'm in a position of deciding what to do with the Aptasias. Do I ignore them? Probably not a good idea. If not, how do I target them? The good thing is that these guys are on rocks that are pretty easy to pull. Not Maybe not that piece, but this piece is easy to pull. That piece is really easy to pull, and I can probably pull them out, try to scrape them off. But I feel like there may be out of Aptasia somewhere in the tank that's not super obvious. I did not see right away. I want to really introduce some sort of um, bio control uh, towards Aptasia, whether it's going to be a type of foul fish, or maybe peppermint shrimps, or maybe I just try Aptasia X again. Or maybe a combination, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Personally, I kind of prefer biological control because I feel like number one, it's a little bit more natural and number two, it'll kind of keep the population down as well. Baby Aptasias that I don't see right away. Uh, those maybe shrimps or the fowl fish could pick at it. I don't know, we'd love to hear your suggestions. What would you suggest for Aptasia control? I kept the light on for the second half of the cycle. So I was, like, I was bracing myself for like hair algae and stuff like that. But it came out really, really nice, surprisingly clean. I'm getting ready to start slowly ramping up the cleanup crew. Oh, by the way, you see all the fish kind of like hanging out here? Because right before filming, I popped on a old nip. Basically, this is a fruit that you can stick on the glass easily and fish just kind of pick at it, which is kind of cool. I think the shrimps uh, are kind of itching to jump on this as well, but they're kind of shy, so eh, they're just catching the stuff that breaks off. Now, you may be hearing some machine going off in the background, and that is actually the Alcatronic right here. Uh, okay, look, it just finished the test. DKH is actually 8.09, perfect. So at this point, I've been running the Alcatronic for two weeks now, and I am super, super, super impressed. Full disclosure, in case I did not make it really clear in the last video, uh, they did send me the Alcatronic as well as the Dostronic 
to try out. And we actually been in the talk for about a year and a half. I didn't think the 45 gallon tank was ready for something so high tech, like auto testing back in the days. So I kept postponing the schedule until I know the uh, new build is well on its way and is ready for auto testing. And uh, dude, I wish I installed it a little bit earlier because let me see if I can show you the chart. I'm not gonna go too deep in this video because I did a whole video on it last week, but check this out. The Alcatronic has been testing every two hours because I'm dowling in the uh, amount of dosing in terms of the ATI Essential Pro. And just to look at this. Can you imagine if you just sit there and do tests every two hours? I could not. So I'm really glad that there's a machine doing it for me and the reagent is super, super cheap. And that's why I'm, I, I'm able to afford to do something like this. And the insight to see the trend and adjust the dosing amount right off the bat has been tremendous. Bottles out of the way, there'll be three things I need to address soon. Number one, Look at this. I clearly do not have enough uh, surface agitation in the sump. So I'm tweaking the flow. I'm trying to see if I can kind of crank up the return pump a little bit. That's number one. The second thing I'm going to address is the refugium, which is going to be a whole video because, man, I have been on this trip trying to get the Dragon Breath macroalgae to take off. But dude, it's just not happening at both times I know what I did wrong. The second time, still a bit stupid mistake. But I'll go a little bit more into it in a future video where I talk a little bit more about uh, using Dragon Breath Macroalgae as refugium exports. And the third thing we're gonna address soon is actually something that I'm really excited about. We're finally getting the actual light for this tank. We're gonna add one more power head and then we're gonna swap out the return pump. And I'm beyond excited for that to happen because I feel like those are the things that's kind of keeping me going through force in this tank right now. I don't have the final light dialed in yet, so I'm afraid to add stuff in. As soon as we got those in place, then we're gonna hit the ground running in terms of adding corals and other livestock. It's gonna be great. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this update. As you can see, a lot of interesting things are coming down the pipelines, and actually there are one or two things up my sleeves that may be a surprise. So if you wanna keep in touch, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 p.m. Shop. Bye. There are many different types and this type supposedly is not as invasive.